Donald Joe Biden beat my ass Trump. None of his legal efforts to undo the election have been working. So now he's trying a different approach. You might remember that yesterday, two Republican election officials in Michigan tried to throw out votes from the entire city of Detroit. And then they had to be shamed into backing down. Well, it turns out that wasn't the end of the story. Breaking overnight, two Republican election officials in Michigan have changed their minds again. First, they refused to certify the election results in Wayne County. Then they agreed to certify them. But now they're trying to rescind that decision despite a lack of evidence. And we are now learning that President Donald Trump actually called both of them following that controversial meeting. Trump's campaign has long been pressuring Georgia Republican Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger. Anytime that Trump targets a person publicly, they get death threats and they have to get security. Raffensperger and his wife have received death threats in recent days, including a text to him that read, you better not botch this recount, your life depends on it. Arizona Democratic Secretary of State Katie Hobbs says she too has faced ongoing and escalating threats of violence. This video shows a group of apparent Trump supporters outside Hobbs' house at night chanting, quote, we are watching you. That's right, people. Donald Trump, president of the United States, is working to overturn the election. And people, can we agree? This is not normal. Seeing Donald Trump work, I mean, that's not normal. But it's happening. Trump is personally... Listen to this. Trump is personally calling election officials and targeting them in public, hoping to pressure them into overturning the election results, which I don't care who you are is deeply disturbing because before now, He was at least pursuing his claims through the courts. Yeah, it wasn't fun, but it was legal. You know, it's the difference between camping on a spawn point in Call of Duty and smashing the controller on your brother's head. One is bad sportsmanship, the other is assault. And the president's supporters aren't even sending anonymous death threats, which makes sense in a way because Trump himself wouldn't be able to threaten anyone anonymously. You know, he'd blow his cover right away. If you don't overturn the results, you're gonna be in big trouble, tremendous trouble. People tell me all the time, wow, what tremendous trouble he's in. Mr. President, I know that's you. No, it's not. It's not me. It's Bonald. But this shows you that there's no winning when it comes to Donald Trump. If he doesn't like you, you get death threats. If he does like you, well, then he gives you COVID. And while the president's team is still fighting the election in court, it's become clear that even that strategy isn't really just about pursuing legal options. The Washington Post's Bob Costa reports that Giuliani's team knows the president can't win and instead are trying to make sure the vote is not certified. Quote, their end game to try to force it to the House. It's a legal game that they're playing, if they can tie this up in court, if they can create enough doubt, then they are hoping that the states just won't certify the election. And if the states don't certify these elections, it goes to the House of Representatives, where Donald Trump has a very good chance of being named president of the United States. So there's a there's a legal uh, trick that they're trying to pull here, throw enough garbage in, in everybody's face that maybe these elections don't get certified, he can steal it in the House. Just to be clear, Trump's lawyers are now reportedly telling people that they don't need to win in court. They just need to create a situation that is so messy, Republican legislatures will step in and overturn people's votes. And again, forgive me here, but it's so astounding to me that America's laws can even allow this kind of thing to happen. I mean, there's all these safeguards, double checks, protections for every single vote, but then if the legislature is a different party than the winner, they can just be like, no, we're just gonna pick our guy instead. That is wild. It's like if you set up two-factor authentication for all your accounts, but then you give your phone to Vladimir Putin for safekeeping. Yeah, don't worry, I make sure that you don't have too many Pornhub accounts. And look, it's extremely unlikely that any of this will work. Although, a lot of extremely unlikely things have happened recently. I mean, if you had told me two years ago that the next Wonder Woman movie would be going straight to HBO Max, I would have said, what's HBO Max? Actually, I'm, I'm still saying that. Wh- what is HBO Max? Like, is, is that the same as HBO Go? Or is that HBO Now? Or is it like both of them? Like, do I have it? Am I on it? But on the other hand, what might save America from Donald Trump trying to overthrow the government is that it's Donald Trump trying to overthrow the government. 
because his people are not known for being that great at what they do. I mean, just today, Rudy Giuliani, the president's personal lawyer and something kids fear is in the closet, gave a press conference to explain why Donald Trump actually won the election, right? That's what he was doing. He was trying to explain to us why Donald Trump actually won the election that we all saw him lose. But we couldn't pay attention to this conspiracy theory because we were all distracted by this. Many of the absentee ballots were fraudulent, and they knew that. And they didn't want to have a count of that. 200% of the registered voters in a district vote. What does that mean? In the states that we have indicated in red, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Nevada, and Arizona, we more than double the number of votes needed to overturn the elections. All you got to do to find out if I'm misleading you at all is to look at the lawsuits. That's the reason why he probably didn't have to go out and campaign. Okay. I know that this could be the end of American democracy, but guys, this shit is hilarious. I mean, Trump always said that he had leakers in his administration, but I didn't know it was this bad. What the hell was going on with Rudy? Honest question. Was, was his hair dye dripping? Was his brain shitting itself? Honestly, I didn't even know that sideburns got periods. You know your legal strategy is f***ed up when even your hair starts crying about it. It was going down both his cheeks. This dude was growing a chin strap beard in real time. And look, I'm not gonna lie, part of me feels bad for Rudy <laughs> because this was the biggest press conference of his life, his big chance to get Donald Trump another term as president and his hair ruined the entire moment. Can you imagine if Abraham Lincoln was reading the Emancipation Proclamation and his beard just walked away? People would have been like, hey, yo, yo, yo. Yeah, man, forget about the slaves, man. Yo, yo your chin hair just bounced, B. Yeah, you gotta you got look at that shit. But maybe this is the perfect combination of evil and ridiculous to end the Trump era. I think it's perfect. Because think about it. If someone said in 2016 that this whole thing would end with Rudy Giuliani openly plotting a coup against the government, but no one would take him seriously because he had hair dye running down his face the entire time, you'd be like, yeah, you know what? It sounds about right.